Hello, um, guys. So, um, we are now on case three. Okay, remember case three, I said that if you have a fraction p of x over p of x, right? Where p of x um, is a quadratic and is still reducible, so you have something, let me use p of x, all over some ax squared plus bx plus c times some other linear factor or something. And this guy cannot be uh, factorized. You can't reduce this into linear factors. Okay? So when you have that case, how do you um, decompose the fraction into linear, into partial fractions? Okay? So that is an example of that if you want to look at. So take a look at this. You have 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 2 times x plus 1. So this falls in this category because of this, right? This cannot be um, reduced, right? And so because of that, um, you have a way of writing it. You have to rewrite write this to be equal to. Because this is a quadratic and it's irreducible, up here, you no longer have a constant. You need um, a linear expression. So, some ax plus b, some linear expression all over the quadratic, x squared plus 2. Again, this because this guy is irreducible. Okay? If it is reducible, then you go back to case 1. Alright. Uh, this is linear, so this is easy. This is case 1. Okay? So, this is just some constant, let's call it c, all over x plus 1. Okay, so we have the quadratic if it is reducible. The numerator in that case should be linear. Remember, I said that the degree of this should be one less than the degree of that. Okay, good. So, so you have this, and so you have to solve for a, b, and c. Let's do that as usual. Multiply each of these fractions by the denominator here. If I multiply all of this by the denominator, it cancels. And so I have 2 at x minus 1 to be equal to, if I multiply by this, this will cancel out this, so I'm left with this guy. So I have ax plus b multiplied by x plus 1, right? And when you multiply this by all of this, x plus 1 cancels out, and you are left with x squared plus 2. So you have c into x squared plus 2, okay? x squared plus 2. Alright, so I like to choose some values of x. That is um, the approach I often like to use. Now, watch this. If I choose x to be negative 1, right, this goes to 0, so all of this is gone, and I just have to solve this and this will see. So I'm going to let x to be negative 1. Then this gives me 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, and negative um, 1 here, that gives me negative 3. All of this goes to zero. When x is negative one, this is zero. Negative one squared is one. One plus two, three. So three c, which implies that c is equal to the right by three, you get negative one. So we have c already. Okay. Then now we can choose any uh, any other two values, right, for x, because we have three constants. So we can let x be equal to like zero, it's easier to work with zero. This is zero, that gives me negative one. This is zero, that is zero. See, b and one will give me b. This goes to zero, two times c is c, so I have plus two c. Okay, I have c already. Okay, so this can be written as b, two c, two times negative one is negative two. Okay, so if you bring these two here, that gives you b to be equal to negative, so positive 2 now minus 1, that gives you 1. You see that? So b is equal to 1. So we have b and we have c. We are left with a. So I can choose now, let x be equal to, let's say, 1. If x is 1, I'm going to have 2 minus 1, which is 1, to be equal to. This is 1, so I have a plus b. 
1 plus this is 2. So I have 2 into a plus b. This is 1 here. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3c three here. We are looking for a, so let's expand this. So this is 2a to b 3c. Okay? So I have 2a b is 1. So this is just 2, right? C is negative 1, so this is negative 3. This is equal to 2a, this and this is negative 1, right? So 1 is equal to all of this. Bring negative 1 to this side, that gives you 2. So 2 is equal to 2a, divide 2 by a implies that a is equal to 1. So we have a, we have b, and we have c. So we can put them back in here, and that gives us there are our partial outcome here. I'll plug them in here. So that gives us our solution. A is one, so this goes away. B is one. C is what? C is negative one. Negative one. Or you can put one there and put it in there. It doesn't matter. Okay? So this, you can decompose this into uh, partial fraction of this form. Alright? So if you have reducible quadratic factors, this is how you do it. Let's do one more. Okay? Let's do one more example of this. For his uh, three. And that will be done with, uh, with three. Now suppose that your um, suppose that your fraction, right? Your rational fraction now. Uh, example two, your rational fraction. Let's choose two x squared plus ten x all over x squared minus two x plus five. This is irreducible. X plus one. This is equal to what? How do we decompose it? Okay. Now notice that if I take 5 here, I can't have factors of 5 that will add up to give me this. See? So that is why this is irreducible. Okay, I cannot factorize that. This is linear, that is fine. Okay? So because because this is irreducible um, uh, quadratic expression, I need to represent this. So I have x squared minus 2x plus 5. Up here, I need a linear expression, right? Something of a degree 1 less than this. So again, I'm going to use ax plus b. Then for this, I'll just have some constants. Because it's linear, I just have constant over x. Plus one. Okay, this is the hardest part. Once you get this, the, the, the rest is algebra. How do you solve for our A, B, and C? So from here, once again, multiply throughout by all of this. And so if you do that, you're going to have 2x squared plus 10x be equal to, if I multiply all of this by this, the quadratic cancels out. So I have Ax plus B times x plus 1, this will cancel, x plus 1 will cancel out, and I have this. So c will multiply the quadratic term, right? x squared 2x plus 5. Okay? So to solve for a, b, and c, a, b, and c, I will choose values for x again. I'm going to do something similar to what I did before. I'll choose x to, to be negative 1 so that this cancels out. That is easy to solve for C. So if you like x to be negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1, so this is 2, and then negative 10, right? This goes to 0, right? Because of this. So here I'm going to have, okay, let's do it. C into negative 1 squared is 1, negative and negative is plus, plus 5, okay? This implies negative 8 is equal to, this is 8c. Therefore, c is equal to 1. Divided by 8, you have negative 1. 
So we have C. And now I can change other values for x to other values, right? So if we, let's do a zero. Let x be equal to zero. Then all of this goes to zero, right? Zero and zero. This will be zero, that will be zero. This is just B. Okay. Zero, zero, we have five C. But we have C, so that makes it easier. At zero is equal to B minus five, right? So B is equal to five. See that? Just bring five, we have B. So we have C and B, we are left with A. Let's choose another value for x, value for x. Let x be equal to what? One. Let's choose one. It's easier to go with one. I have two. One squared is two. This is ten. So that's twelve, right? X is one. So I'm going to have twelve is equal to. They said this should be two, right? This is one. So a plus b. And then over here, 1 and 1, that's negative 1 plus this is 4, right? So we have 4c here. See that? 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 2, right? That's negative. And so that means this. Good. So this is 2a plus 2b plus 4c. 2a. B, we found B to be 5, so this is 10. C was negative 1, so this is minus 4. So this is 2A. This and this will be plus 6, right? And so, let's come back here. We can get rid of all of this. Okay? So we have, we have 12, right? 12 is equal to 2a plus 6. So 2a is equal to, take this there, that gives you 6. Therefore, a is equal to divide through by 2, you have 3. So you have a to be 3, b to be 5, c to be negative 1. You put them back here, and that gives you the expression, right, for the um, partial problem. So A is 3, that's making my work easy, right? I could have written it down somewhere. B is 5, and C is negative 1. I'm going to do it this way now. All right? Okay, so given this expression, you can write it into partial fractions uh, in this way. And that is for case 3. So the next is like will be case 4. Maybe that will be it actually. Case 5 is a mixture which we have looked at. The reducible linear. Okay. So we just look at one more, an example of two of case four. And that should be it for partial fractions. Okay?